So I got this inbox message from Felicia1717 back in late December, a video the skeptical heretic made about men's reproductive rights. I am going to go ahead and read this inbox message, but because this is Felicia1717, let me just prepare myself. Don't put your dick in a beehive. So says this guy. He does a good job explaining male personal responsibility and pretty much exposes MRA whining about male reproductive rights. You have your right to wear a condom. You have the right to talk to a girl before having sex with her and find out if she's interested in having kids or not. And if she's pro-life or pro-choice. You have a right not to have sex with her if you think she will betray your migto, MRA policies of non-reproduction. Oh God, Alka-Seltzer wasn't enough to deal with this stupidity. I'm gonna have to break out something stronger. <sighs> a man can talk to a woman about his reproductive desires, and find one that agrees to have a child or not to have a child, okay? Well women can talk to her boyfriend about these things too, and find one that agrees with her stance. Men have a right to wear a condom, so do women. Both can wear a condom and demand the other also do so. And of course men have the right to just not have sex with a girl, or not have sex with a girl that doesn't respect his MRA values. Okay, and so do women, since having these options means men no longer have a say in the reproductive process, than because women also have these exact choices, and a lot more. Women should no longer have any say in the reproductive process. How can you be pro-choice, and I know you are, and yet hold the view that men, with even less options than women, shouldn't have any opt-out available, Felicia, you haven't actually put forth an argument against legal paternal surrender, financial abortion for men, all you've done is once again show your double standard sexist bigotry, Felicia, next time you start to write on your blog about the importance of women's right to an abortion, just repeat what you wrote to me, that men and women can talk to each other about their reproductive desires, avoid sex, wear condoms, and therefore the woman done had her say, she used her right to talk to her man, she used her right to wear or not wear a condom, she done had her rights, made her choices, no opting out at this point, no abortion. Because it's what you just said to me, Christ Allah Buddha Darwin, Alka Seltzer and Jack Daniels isn't enough to deal with you, I need something stronger. Yeah, that hit the spot. Now on to the video of Skeptical Heretic. So I'm a little bit surprised that I'm making this video. Uh, I figured most uh, most people kind of understood the mechanics of this and the ones that didn't had something wrong with them. But I guess there's a lot of teenage boys on the internet who don't understand basic shit. Wow, this guy has an amazing voice, dude. You need a job in radio or doing voiceovers or something. Seriously, listen to this guy. Put your dick in a beehive methodology. For example, if you don't know if uh, someone has STDs or not, or whether you can trust them to, I guess, adhere to your opinion on whether you want to reproduce or not, then you probably shouldn't be fucking them. Wow, that's amazing. As a man who cannot speak, I am rather envious of your golden voice. You sound like a 1930s hard-nosed detective. Try reading this old noir script I've been working on. I remembered that night, the night it all happened. June 15th, 1931, I was in my office finishing up some paperwork. The air outside was thicker than Big Al's clam chowder, as foggy as a steam house. It was a perfect night for trouble. No sooner than the thought had occurred to me, there was a knock on my door, and in she walked, trouble. I'm talking five foot eight, curves more dangerous than dead man's bluff, cascading hair that shimmered like a flame, and I was drawn to her like a moth. Wow, that was amazing. Anyhow, let's get to the video. So I'm a little bit surprised that I'm making this video. Um, I figured most, uh, most people kind of understood the mechanics of this and the ones that didn't had something wrong with them. But I guess there's a lot of teenage boys on the internet who don't understand basic shit. Oh goody, grandpa's gonna teach us boys how to be real men, hooray, you know what pops, because you seem like a pretty old fashioned guy, and sound like a Dick Tracy character, I think I should put on my old fashioned movie glasses when you talk. 
So let's talk about this. I don't uh, self, just a disclaimer, I don't self-identify as a feminist or a masculinist or MRA or any of that shit. I think gender politics are uh, a waste of time for the most part. Because if you're dealing with human rights, there are some simple things you can adopt that make sense for everybody regardless of what their plumbing is. It makes me wonder if you feel the same way about racial civil rights, like, maybe the Negroes shouldn't worry about their racial rights, they should just worry about the rights that affect all demographics, I mean, it's like, pops, don't you think that sometimes the very issue is that one demographic of people can be systematically disadvantaged specifically and deliberately to another demographic, and fighting to remove the systematic disadvantage is a righteous and just cause, anyhow gramps, do go on, our teenage years yearn for your elderly wisdom. <clears throat> this seems to be difficult for some people to grasp in terms of reproductive rights. I think this is more of a new problem because we've been able to technologically decouple sex from reproduction, but not from responsibility. I know, I know, us kids today, no responsibility, we have it so much easier. Back in your day you had to walk 80 miles in the snow to school, without shoes, and the school had no fancy electric heaters, but it toughened you up and made a man out of you. Us kids today, we just don't know the meaning of the word responsibility. Grandma Felicia tried to tell us all about personal responsibility, about how men asking for almost as many reproductive rights as women currently enjoy, is somehow a lack of responsibility, but I didn't understand it because I was busy listening to my guns and butter, and Snoop Doggy Dang, and riding my skateboard. This, uh, this was sort of kicked off by a conversation I had with someone on one of Rob's videos. And I'm just going to go through his points that he made in this little back and forth and why they're terrible. First statement he, he makes is, uh, men are completely beholden to whatever choice the mother makes once she becomes pregnant. And uh, yeah, the reason for that is because you've already made your choices, and screwed them both up. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Pops, but didn't the woman in this scenario have the exact same choices? And isn't the issue that they have more choices left that men don't have? Both being two, as far as I can see, that, based on your aim, would address the situation in total before a woman is even involved. Now is that in total, in total, or in toto? Because those three always confused me, like click and click, Q and Q. Choice number one is the choice of who you have sex with. Now, typically, I'm always a, an advocate of not having sex with people you don't trust. I call this the don't put your dick in a beehive methodology. Oh, that sounds a lot like the pro-lifer slogan of girls shouldn't open their beehive to a dude bro's dick methodology. Are you a pro-lifer, Pops? For example, if you don't know if uh, someone has STDs or not, or whether you can trust them to, I guess, adhere to your opinion on whether you want to reproduce or not, then you probably shouldn't be fucking them. Yeah, that's what my friend's dad told her when she got knocked up and wanted an abortion, and he put his foot down and told her those exact words because they were pro-life Christians. Are you a pro-life Christian, Pops? And that... I know that a lot of the dude bros are kind of upset with that point of view because, you know, one night stands are awesome, bro, but uh, no they're not, especially when the potential outcome is so negative in your opinion. Yeah, that sounds just like my friend, Alexa, that I was telling you about. Her dad said that she shouldn't have had a one night stand like a slut, and getting knocked up was a natural consequence of her bad behavior and an abortion is wrong, because she shouldn't be taking the consequences of her bad behavior out on the baby. Again, he's a pro-life Christian. Of course some of the people at my school tell me that Alexa's father had no right slut-shaming her for that one night stand, but if it's okay to slut-shame boys like you just did, then I guess slut-shaming girls is just fine, because as a feminist, I believe in equal treatment of the sexes. Of course my feminist professor said a slut-shaming girls is wrong, but what does she know? She also said boys never get slut-shamed. And here you are doing just that. See, if you go and knock someone up, you're responsible. Based on 
whether the child is born or not. Um, Pops, I think what you said might be sexist. You said if I get a woman knocked up, I am responsible for doing it. But in feminist class, they taught us that patriarchy, which can be found all through the traditional conservative movement, believes that women are objects, creatures without agency, and thus are exempt from certain privileges, but also exempt from responsibilities, kinda like a child, and boys are subjects with agency, here, let Lacey Green explain it. Oh hi babes, yours truly here. This is an object. Objects exist to do something for me, while I, Lacey, cutter of paper, am the subject. Subjects act, while objects are acted upon. You see, in this scenario, you are claiming the male is a subject, when he stuck his dick in her beehive, he was acting upon the woman, who is an object, thus the consequence of her pregnancy, is the fault of the subject, the one with agency, and she has no responsibility, because unlike a subject, she is just an object, thus shares no responsibility, and that's why abortions are allowed, because our patriarchal society says girls are objects who can't be held accountable for the decision to engage in activities leading towards her pregnancy, but boys are to be held financially responsible because they are subjects and can be held responsible, and that kind of thinking is a part of patriarchy, and that's why it is so important that we fight patriarchy by either ending abortion because women, who are people, not objects, are to be held accountable for their decisions, or we give males the right to opt out of making irresponsible decisions just like we give to the women, and yes I know my friend Lacey, is technically incorrect about the definitions of subject and object, but it's feminist metaphor, I doubt you'd get it pops, it's new age slang daddyo. And that's just kinda how it goes. So once your semen leaves the head of your dick, your choice is over. You've already decided to put yourself in that jeopardy. Just like when that semen penetrates a woman's egg, her choice is pretty much over. By allowing a man to squirt inside her beehive, she's already put herself in the jeopardy. And so now you're going to pay the consequences of your poor decision. And that's why abortion ought to be legal, right? Now, for all the dude bros out there, you also have a secondary decision that's addressed in the next point. So a man doesn't want a child and he is running away from responsibility, but a woman doesn't want a child. Who gives a fuck? It's her body. She can do what she wants. Do you not see the hypocrisy in that statement? No, I don't. You don't see it, really? Maybe you need better glasses, here. Do you see it now? No? Perhaps I can draw a picture for you. Do you see it now? You don't see the double standard, really? No? No double standard at all going on here? And the reason why is because you have your body, and you can do whatever you want. And if you don't want to reproduce, you have a very simple option. You can go get a vasectomy. And she can get her tubes tied. Now, this is typically when you hear something that's ridiculously stupid and false, like, yes, a vasectomy that can easily reverse itself. And this gentleman actually said that, and I don't know where he got that information, because according to medical statistics, vasectomies are, they reverse themselves maybe one every 4,000, I think was the figure I saw. I don't know about reversing itself, but the fail rate, regardless of why it fails, is 1 in 500, deduced from 15 to 20 out of 10,000. I'll link the source. A tubal ligation, tying a woman's tubes, is 1 in 76 deduced from 13 out of 1,000. Chances of reversing these procedures successful is roughly 50-50 for both. With a man it is very important that he reverse it before 10 years, since his chances of success drastically go down quick after 10 years. For women it works a little different and the success percentage is 20 to 70 and the success rate varies greatly on different circumstances, but it's not completely inaccurate to say a mean average of 50% either way, these operations for both men and women, aren't decisions to make lightly, neither has a 100% efficacy rate, and neither have a great chance of conception after surgical reversal, the numbers and stats of birth control with references, is as follows, tubal ligation, for women, 99.5 to 98.7 percent effective per five years, vasectomy, for men, 99.98 to 99.95 percent effective, per year, IUD, 
for women, 99.1% effective per year, birth control patches, pills, injections, rings, for women, 86% effective per 3 years, condoms, for men, 84% to 98% per year, numbers on this fluctuate greatly depending on the study being observed and a large host of factors, with that out of the way, let me ask you something, what about that 1 in 500, why is he told too fucking bad, man up, yet when a method of birth control fails for a woman she is not told too fucking bad, woman up, she is instead given a post conception opt out, men are not, yet you see this as lacking personal responsibility when men ask that they be given this same option, you have said nothing, nothing whatsoever to justify the double standard you don't see, what I want to harp back on is your insistence that the chances of a vasectomy failing are 1 in 4000, actually 1 in 500, thus the option to opt out of parenthood post conception must be taken off the table, you do of course realize that this is a pro-life or argument, right, their argument is, not that many women get raped, and it's true nowhere near 1 in 4 are legit raped, and because of, insert pseudo-scientific horse shit, a woman's body does a thing which makes her not get pregnant during a rape, thus the chances of a woman getting pregnant by rape is astronomically low, thus abortions for rape victims shouldn't be an option, to that crock of horse shit, can I just ask, even if only 1 in 20 million women per year got pregnant via rape, why can't they have an abortion, does it matter if 50% of women per year get impregnated via rape, or whether it's one woman on earth per year this happens to, why does the percentage dictate the right, this is as retarded as a man calling the fire department, and proclaiming his air conditioner caught on fire and is burning his house down, and the fire department feeling that because fire by portable air conditioning unit is so rare, they aren't going to go put out the fire, let's go over the male versus female reproductive options let me also declare that pulling out is a piss poor method for both men and women, and I shouldn't have to explain why, thus it is not being included, since pulling out is about as effective as just praying really hard, 1, a woman can select only a responsible man who accepts that if she gets pregnant he must marry her, or that she will abort it, and he needs to agree to this, and she can select a worthy mate who will honor this agreement, that is they can talk about this in advance, 2, a woman can be abstinent, 3, a woman can wear a condom or insist the man do so, 4, a woman can use birth control pills, patches, injections, rings, and whatever self-applied remedy, 5, a woman can get an IUD 6, a woman can get her tubes tied, two different surgical procedures, we'll call both tube tying, 7, a woman can use the morning after pill, 8, a woman can have an abortion, 9, a woman, can set the child up for adoption, 9 is technically a post-birth, parental option, rather than reproductive option, now let's count the male options, 1, he can talk with her about his desire or non-desire to have a child and find a woman he can trust to honor this, that is they can talk about it, 2, a man can be abstinent, 3, a man can wear a condom or insist that she wear a female condom, 4, a man can have a vasectomy, so men get half the reproductive, parental options as women, yet asking for one, just one more option, is considered men being irresponsible, and the men just need to man up, take it like a man, be a real man, a good old fashioned manly man, and do the honorable thing, which is effectively whatever choice the woman sticks him with, women have 8, possibly 9, options, men have 4, and asking for a fifth is greedy, in a society that scoffs at double standards and inequality, men wanting to go from having 4 options to a woman's 9, to being 5 options to a woman's 9, is being greedy and irresponsible, grandpa, can I just show you the picture I drew for you, again? So, those are the two decisions that you can make before you start engaging in sex to ensure that you won't have this problem that you're so fucking afraid of. Grandpa, you know what I have found rather peculiar? When males have a concern or fear of something, we as a society tell them to quit being such pussies, quit being so damn afraid, it's like we just start with the eye rolling, the disapproving shaking of our head, the brow beating, we all but say in a sing-song manner, Freddy cat, Freddy cat. But when women express fear of something, anything, we instantly run to their rescue with solutions and reassurances. Grandpa, do you ever suspect maybe this reinforces women's crybaby behavior, since their whining and crying results in the world getting off its ass and doing for them, but when we do it we're mocked for it, so as men are brave and strong to a fault, and women are kept weak and helpless. And that also addresses the whole sperm stealing women argument as invalid as that is for the most part 
I mean, who's going to steal the semen of a fucking construction worker? Not anyone in their right mind. What the fuck is your problem? What did I ever do to you? Making an honest buck is beneath you or something, your highness. Okay Pops, I am starting to think you're just a little mean when you've been drinking. What do you have against construction workers? Why does it matter if a person is rich or poor, a trades worker or a college graduate? Why does any of this make them less of a human being? Why are you judging human worth by the job they hold and the money they make? Also, construction workers typically make good money, and are only looked down on as manual labor working class by high society. No offense pops, but I'm thinking you're no aristocrat. Furthermore, this statement could easily be used to slut shame women and to mock their fear of impregnation by rape. You could say any man that would wait until a fat girl like you is completely passed out, take off your clothes, force his dick in your dry vagina, come in you knocking you up, put your clothes back on, and pretend like nothing happened, and to do this to a fat girl, is a real sick fucker and you'd be right, because most men wouldn't do that, it would take a rather disturbed guy to do that, but news flash, there are a lot of disturbed guys out there, and there are a lot of disturbed girls out there that will poke holes in the condom, pull the condom out of the trash, deliberately lie about being on the pill to get knocked up, to save their relationship with him when he is about to dump her for someone else, or even sometimes get knocked up from a one night stand with some dude bro and then lie and tell their boyfriend I'm pregnant with your kid, there are disturbed guys and girls around every corner, and it's not always easy to tell a person's in a disturbed self just by looking at their outward mask of innocence and sanity, and while both men and women should be responsible, we all have moments of weakness, poor judgment and irresponsibility, you could just as easily be preaching to teenage girls instead of us teenage dude bros, that she should be responsible enough not to get drunk near a bunch of dude bros, and that she made her decision to get drunk and pass out, she made her decision, she made her bed, now lay in it, don't take it out on the baby by aborting it, now I have said in the past that women getting drunk, regretting it in the morning, and calling this rape, and having the boy spend the rest of his life in prison, is fucked up and wrong, this whole bit about I was too drunk to give meaningful consent is pure bullshit, it was meaningful when she gave it, regardless of her regret afterward, the deed can't be undone, thus no take backs on consent after the deed is done, calling it rape after the fact is not a take back, but at no point in time am I going to tell either of those two drunk and irresponsible persons that getting drunk and fucking without condoms means that they are stuck being moms and dads with no way out and no medical treatment for the STD they contracted from each other, because that's their punishment for the crime of irresponsibility, you can't take back the sex, you can't undo it, but you can undo the pregnancy before the birth of the child is finalized, you can opt out of your future role to support it before it is born and you are then bound to the obligation, you support a woman escaping parenthood by abortion, even if the reason she is knocked up is because of her irresponsible behavior, but you don't support anything similar for a man, a woman can wake up hungover and pregnant and say oops I made a mistake last night, I am renouncing my parental obligation before it is born by aborting it now, you support this, but not a man saying oops I made a mistake last night, I am renouncing my parental obligation before it is born by waiving my father's rights on this court document, shouldn't it be both or neither, again there's this word it's called double standard and us kids and our iPods and iPhones have this nifty new website which is the bees knees called wikipedia and I am going to link you to the entry on double standard, double standards are a thing feminists fight against, and you know what else crosses my mind, if men were able to opt out like women could, women wouldn't do things like deliberately get knocked up against a man's wishes as a way of trapping him or financially obligating him, because he could just opt out, and the trick wouldn't work, and thus the real messed up girls wouldn't use that trick, it's the fact that all reproductive rights are in the hands of women that encourages them to be so abusive with their reproductive rights and to use it to their advantage like a sociopath, humans are naturally as wicked as you allow them to be, women are allowed to be pretty fucking wicked, it's just a thought, but maybe if women were given less of an upper hand in reproductive rights, they'd quit abusing their reproductive rights, and if women quit abusing their reproductive rights, men would have less mistrust of women, I'm just saying, anytime you give one group of people power over another, many of them tend to abuse that power, and any group being abused by the power of another group, will become distrusting and resentful towards that group, make things equal for men and women, and women will abuse men less, and men will be more trusting of them, kill two birds with one stone, it's amazing how noble the pursuit of gender equality is. Which means that decision number one was fucked up and you're allowing crazy people to have access to your dick. That's your mistake. Bad deal buddy. Again pops, if I was a teenage slut instead of a teenage dude bro, 
would you be giving me the same speech with reversed gendered language, you know, like, your ex got you knocked up and ran, but you should have known better than to date some crazy fucked up dude bro, letting some player, gangster boy, have access to your beehive, you made your decision and you fucked up, tough break cupcake, no alimony, no child support, no welfare, no abortion, you made your bed now lay in it, you need to woman up, take it like a woman, would you be giving this tough talk to us if we were girls, or are you doing that thing again, that double standard, again you should click that link, it's an important word you need to be made aware of. Number two, you didn't get a vasectomy. So you're spraying your shit everywhere, you have no control. And her fault for not having a tubal ligation? Or is this just a male-only double standard again? And so, you have failed that decision matrix if you get to the point where someone is stealing your semen. I mean, come on, get the fuck out of here. So, I hope this has been a little bit enlightening to people who think that things like women's decisions when it comes to abortion are, you know, problematic if there isn't male input. Because the male already had his input, so to speak. Oh, that's clever. Not only is it a play on words, it's a perfect imitation of an old-fashioned 1950s traditionalist manly man whipping his kids into shape with some manly tough talk about responsibility all the while patting his adorable daughter on the head, assuring her that because she is a girl, an eternal child with cotton candy for brains, responsibility is not applicable to her, neither is military service, an equal pay, a career, an education, or the right to vote, because hey, she's just a girl, hard work and responsibility for boys, and popping out babies and being a stay-at-home mom for girls, you just did a wonderful imitation of that, it was hilarious, now before I go off gallivanting around and traipsing through people's yards, probably old people's yards, because it's what a sweeper snappers do, I think I am going to dial up my feminist friends or pussy posse and help fight the double standards you have professed in this video, come on, where my ladies at? Really, no feminist wants to make a video responding to grandpa here, to tell him that his old fashioned patriarchal views are offensive to feminism, none of you, oh come on now. He's holding men and women to different standards and supporting the notion that one sex can have more options, more rights, more privileges than another, clearly that goes against the very core of what feminism stands for, right?